Clipping! Oddly enough, this is one of my favorite aspects of mapping. Clipping in this context is referring to the invisible brushes in a map that keep you out of areas you aren't supposed to be in and create the boundaries of your map, as well as smooth out rough edges to prevent players from getting caught on them. When you see an exploit where a player can escape the map's gameplay space, there's a good chance it's due to a clipping problem. The same can be said about players finding places out of the way that they can stand on that weren't intentionally placed there by the mapper. I call those perch points. You have a few tool materials you can use for clipping. Clip and Player Clip are two of these. In TF2, they actually do exactly the same thing, so you can use either one. Personally, I've always used Player Clip, but there's really no reason why. This material is solid in regards to player collision, but does not block bullets or projectiles. The next material is Block Bullets. This material is again completely solid to players, and as its name applies, blocks bullets and projectiles. The most common use of clipping is to block players from getting out of the gameplay space of your map or on top of roofs that they don't belong on. TF2 is a very vertical game where soldiers and demo men can launch themselves to incredible heights. You have to keep all forms of movement in mind when clipping your map. Failing to do so is what causes most common exploits such as getting out of the map. To do so, it's as simple as creating a brush where you'll want your invisible walls and applying the clipping material of choice to it. In game, these will not be visible. Another use of clipping is smoothing out edges you don't want players to get caught up on. Have you ever ran backwards trying to escape an enemy only to get caught up on a teeny tiny doorway or some other prop or geometry? That's the kind of thing you want to try to find and fix. You can do so by building small ramps that players will slide off of when they walk against them. Typically, I try to make it at least a 2 to 1 ramp, but sometimes you can get away with a 1 to 1 angle. The key thing to keep in mind is to not make these too large. If a lip is any more than about 16 hammer units, I often just leave it alone. Forcing players around anything larger will seem weird to them, and sometimes they'll actually want to use that space for cover, which you're denying them with your clipping. Typically, this is done in the later detailing stages of your map, but it's not a bad idea to do it early with any edges you feel will be problematic. Anything that irritates your player is good to avoid, even in early testing, as their focus will end up on the frustrating parts of your map, leading to a poor gameplay experience. A fully developed map can get pretty messy with all this clipping, so it's a good idea to hide them when you aren't working on them using the viz groups on the right here. Select the Auto tab, and check off all tool brushes. Now just be sure to turn them back on before you do your final compile and release. I think just about every mapper goes through the nightmare of releasing a new version only to realize they left all their clipping off. Try to learn from our mistakes if you can, but this one might just be something you have to go through at least once. You can also view clip brushes in a map in-game by opening the console, typing in svcheats1, and then R draw clip brushes 2 This is useful for spotting places you've missed in your maps, or even for finding exploits on others. And of course, then you'll do the responsible thing and inform the mapper of any exploits so they can fix it, right? As for block bullets, a great place to use it is to smooth out stairs. Walking upstairs without any form of clipping will cause the player's view to pop up on each step, which just isn't pleasant to look at. Each step can also cause players jumping on them to come to a very sudden stop as they hit the face of it, rather than move up to the next step. This frustrating issue can pop up on any small vertical ledge, so it's something to keep an eye out for. But the reason we use block bullets instead of player clip on stairs is due to what's known as the splash damage bug. Splash damage is calculated by shooting rays out from the exact point an explosion originates from. This means even the tiniest ledge can block your explosion damage from hitting a player that could even be standing right next to it. Using block bullets causes the damage to fan out over the top of your steps rather than in a wedge between them. A downside to this is that pipe bombs will roll down your stairs more easily and look a little off when doing so, but I personally think it's a very minor downside and is worth the benefits. I can't say I've ever seen anyone complain about their immersion being ruined because of this. Now not everyone uses block bullets for their stairs. Often you'll find just simple player clips, but it's something I've learned to always do from my experience mapping for competitive with my map Glassworks. Players really appreciate this attention to detail even if they don't realize what's going on. To learn a bit more about how splash damage works, check the links in the description. Some people are very minimal with their clipping, while others, such as myself, tend to take it into the obsessive range. Ultimately, it's your decision and your map.